Well, I think this would be a great time to just talk about the internship program. And you can specifically mention any of the details that students would want to know, because I think a lot of them would be interested, like, oh my gosh, Chelsea's involved with T-Mobile internships. I would love to intern there. So <laughs> you can shamelessly plug anything and everything about the T-Mobile internship <laughs> process. You're opening up a, a window of like a lot of talk here, Bruce. That's fine. Um, so I, I, I think they really want to hear it. Perfect. Well, here's my spiel, guys. So I am the program manager for our early and careers program at T-Mobile. I support six programs. We have our flagship internship, which is our 12-week internship. We also have a couple of other specific programs to different, um, different ages of students. So we have our Explore Prep, which is juniors in, in high school. We have Explore, which is high school seniors. And then we also have Leaders to Executives, which is uh, MBA and above graduates. And then we also have our TechX track, which is specific to, te to technology roles. And it's a three month rotational program, both internships and professional tracks as well. The bulk of my focus is on our U of Magenta 12 week internship. For that to be eligible for that program, um, you need to be currently enrolled in school. Uh, you need to, uh, trying to think what all of our requirements are. There aren't really many requirements other than you just have to be in school. You have to be enrolled. We offer relocation. Most of our job opportunities for our internships are located in Bellevue, Washington, uh, but we do have a lot of opportunities all across the nation. So we do ask that as you apply, you be open to relocation because we do provide that to you guys as candidates. What that looks like is we provide housing um, and then some type of transportation stipend for the summer. Food allowances are not included, but you guys, it's a 12 week full paid internship. That is insane to me. I know when I was graduating college back in 2015, which is only five years ago, guys, um, internships were not a big thing. I know for a fact that my career services, and even when I was in college, you know, when I was in college and or when I was in high school and graduating, the conversation was you need to go to college because you need to go to college. It wasn't you need to go to college because it helps you develop your what you want to do for your career. It was just you need to go to college. So I went to college. I went to Central. I loved my time with Central. I actually ended as an online student because I got into the workforce and I wanted to work while completing my schoolwork. Either way you go about that, it's totally fine. Even for our internship program, if you are only part-time, you are eligible for our program. So that's a huge perk. Um, but you guys, our program is a ton of fun. Uh, that's really all I, I want to like end on there for is we have a ton of fun. It is 12 weeks full of events. You get access to all of our executive speaker, our executive leaders, including our CEO, Mike Siever. You guys get invited to development series where we bring in uh, guests outside of the company, such as Fidelity and LinkedIn. And then you also get exclusive access to all of our internal partners, such as our diversity network groups, as well as our social brand teams. So again, the summer is a ton of fun. That is what I love most about my job is all of the events and getting the interns together. Um, you know, in normal circumstances, we also take them off site to different things such as Mariners games and soccer games. Um, we have the Seattle, obviously the Seattle Sounders here. Uh, so we normally take them to all of those types of events as well, just to celebrate. Like, we're not trying to get, we don't expect you to work when you're with us. We want you just to have fun when you're with us. Um, during your internship, what you can expect from your team, every intern is assigned to a different hiring manager and mentor. So we have very, very few hiring managers that have mo uh, more than one intern, but rest assured, whatever you are working on as an intern, you are the only one doing that job. Every single one of our interns, which we have over 305 this summer, are all working on individual and unique projects that are truly impacting the business units that they work in, as well as the enterprise as a whole. Um, you aren't working on 
fake stuff or pet projects or you're not you're not bringing your manager coffee every single morning you are truly a valued member on the team and have true deliverables to achieve within your 12 weeks that is one thing i can say that we can brag most about our program in comparison to some of other the big big companies in our area um you know to not name companies specifically a lot of the companies that we compete with year to year they have the exact same internships every single year so as you're applying for such um, a position with a company such as computer science they have computer science internships here at t-mobile what we do is as you're applying you're applying based off of your degree so if you have a computer science degree, you're going to apply under our computer science sourcing rec. If you have a degree in marketing, you're applying under our degree uh, as an intern for marketing. After that, over the course of seven months after our interns have left us in September, we spend seven months working with our managers and identifying what their project and their business need for that individual team is going to be the next year. So we spend seven months truly crafting the need for an individual intern on individual teams rather than just placing interns into positions because it's a computer science degree. Um, again, our positions are true value added work in comparison to a lot in our area. Wow. Very good. And so they're obviously competitive internships. Uh, if you apply, you may not get it because you know, people from around the nation are, are looking to intern at T-Mobile. What are some things, obviously, whether it's jobs or internships, that you think students could be doing during college, but maybe outside the classroom, to be competitive, to stand out, and to be able to get some of these great opportunities like the T-Mobile internship? Yeah, whether you're looking for an internship or a professional career, um, you know, some of the things that I would recommend that I wish I had done when I was in your guys' position was, again, network. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask for, to meet someone for coffee or to schedule just a quick Zoom call for 15, 20 minutes with someone, um, you would be amazed how much information and insight you can get from just networking alone. I know after I had joined T-Mobile, one of the first things that was recommended to me as a new employee was to build my network internally, and it was to be people outside of my organization. That sounded terrifying with a company of over 30,000 employees, all right? Okay, so I went out and I did it. Um, I actually met with someone in the marketing organization and she, to this day, she's actually since moved on from T-Mobile, but we are still great um, mentors for each other outside of just, you know, my everyday uh, work. Uh, she gave me some great opportunities to listen in on different rep, uh, seminars for, both professional and personal self-development, which I think is key. Don't always focus on everything in such a professional aspect. You really want to take this time to develop yourself as well um, and, and identify who you are as an individual. Really make yourself a, a brand for yourself is going to be key. Um, so for instance, when going into an interview and uh, or think about when you're Pretend, sorry, totally off topic a little bit, but like one thing, an advice piece that we give our interns is have your guys's elevator speech ready. So when you're stuck in a, in a sky rise and the doors open and the CEO of T-Mobile walks in and he says, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I, I'm Mike Siever. And you say, oh, hi, I'm Chelsea Knightley. And he goes, what do you do? Okay, you don't ramble on. You have to have something quick and concise. Give him your elevator speech. Who are you? And that's the piece that I think you guys could really take this time to focus on is who are you? Um, and at T-Mobile, we're hashtag be you through and through. I mean, that we, we preach that over and over. So, um, I, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about T-Mobile, this goes even further for you guys as candidates. Very good. Well, that kind of leads into resume and or interview advice. Any tips that you would have? Uh, it's a very broad question, but 
whatever details you'd like to address. I'll, I'll address them broadly first, and then I'll go into a little bit of the nitty gritty for specific to T-Mobile, but just broad statements is every company in today's culture has a LinkedIn profile. So if you're interested in a company, go to their LinkedIn profile first, search in there for interview tips. I guarantee you there are interview tips specific to those companies. The second piece is to go onto their company page and look up their, their, their mission statement. Understand at the core who that company is and take notes. Um, you know, every interviewer will perceive this a little different, so it's hard to say this will work 100% of the time, but listen, every job that I have shown, uh, every interview that I have shown up to with a true portfolio of who that interviewer is, their history that I got off of LinkedIn, LinkedIn any of the other people I'll be talking to, their history that, again, I got off of LinkedIn, the company culture history you are able to come to an interview prepared. Now, don't print something off and then just think that you know it. You have to study that information, make flashcards, whatever you have to do to make sure that you remember that information top of head. Whatever you have wrote down is just more so for a cue. Um, that's gonna be my, rec those are just kind of some of my generic tips for interviewing. Um, whether it be with T-Mobile or any other company in, in the world. But in spe for specifically to T-Mobile, um, I have a lot of resume tips. Um, a lot of these actually are applicable to all the, the industry as a whole, um, but we do have some very specific ones to T-Mobile. The non-specific ones to T-Mobile that we always, always, always recommend that you guys do is make it clean and simple. Don't go crazy. Don't add a bunch of graphics and details. Less is more with your, in, with your resumes. As a uh, program manager that supports 10 recruiters who, where we manually read through all resumes, less is more. I'm telling you, if, you're, if your resume is busy or the font is super tiny, the, the, the talent scouts or recruiters are just not gonna take the time. So uh, what that also means for T-Mobile though, is regardless if it's less or more and the font isn't size six, if you need to go on to two pages here at T-Mobile, we will read it. A lot of companies and a lot of career services will always tell their candidates, your resume should not be more than a page long. False, okay? I'm telling you, someone such, for instance, as my father, who has been in the industry for over 35 years, cannot actively reflect who he is as a person first, as well as an employee and his history as an employee on one page. I'm telling you, it's false. They're telling you lies. Give us an extended resume because here at T-Mobile, we will read it. Um, here's the caveat though, is don't just give us an extended resume if the information is not applicable to the position you're applying to. What that looks like is, for instance, if you're applying for a job as an electrical engineer and you, when you were 16 years old, had a job as a cashier at a McDonald's, unless you can find true relevant experience there and co compare it back to you, the job that you're trying to get at T-Mobile as an electrical engineer, maybe just leave it off. Again, you just wanna make sure whatever you have on your resume is relevant to the position you're applying to. Some other very specific things to uh, information for T-Mobile is T-Mobile, you, you can't upload a cover letter here. Um, this is, that process was actually removed in our 2019 season. And a lot of companies are actually adapting to this. And here's the reason. I know first, there's at least one of you sitting and listening on this that had, was applying for a job and said, oh, they want a cover letter. So you went to Google and you typed in Google template cover letter, right? We've all done it, I've done it, guys. Um, here's the thing, as a recruiter, we know when the, it's a template. It's very obvious when you're using a templated cover letter. And because of that, a lot of companies are getting away from that because it's not, it's not unique to that individual person. They're just plugging and playing, changing a few words, right? Um, so 
at T-Mobile, you don't, you can't even upload one. But what we do ask, because we're not getting that cover letter from you, beyond just what's on your resume and your professional and your coursework, who are you as a person? So we ask that you provide a summary statement at the top of your resume, under your name, some, just somewhere at the top. And this again, I've already mentioned it, is your elevator speech. Who are you? No more than four sentences. We like to see it two to three, short, concise. It should not repeat any information that is down below in your resume. Um, it's just ex exactly what I said. Who are you as a person and why, key, why are you trying to get a job with T-Mobile? Another piece of advice that I can give you that is more general is, guys, stop applying with the same resume to multiple companies. I know your career services educates you to do this, that you should not be using the same resume. I'm sure your parents have said this. You've had other professional colleagues that have said this, but we all do it. I'm guilty of it too, okay? But I'm telling you, if you're applying with a generic resume to companies, the companies know it. Um, why I also recommend going to your, the company's mission and culture, uh, like whatever their statements might be, is because they use specific catch words, right? Here at T-Mobile, we use words like BU, love, magenta, uh, uncarrier, relentless, right? Those words you should be adding into your resume. <laughs> because guess what? Those words are the ones that are going to stand out and show us as recruiters that you've taken the extra step to do your research on T-Mobile, to modify your resume, to meet the needs of that company. Um, it just gives you guys another extra step. You know, if you're specifically applying to internships, this next piece is going to be for you. If you're applying for a more um, full-time role, this isn't really applicable, but if you're applying for an internship, because that's what I work with, um, one thing that we also recommend is if you aren't completing your coursework, so if you are not a graduating senior, we recommend you actually list the coursework that you're, you're completing. So somewhere on your resume, rather than just saying I'm getting a degree in computer science, list below it what specific courses you've completed that are applicable to the job you're trying to achieve as well as what courses you're projected to take. Why I recommend this is, for instance, um, we have RF engineers here and we have RF engineer interns. A lot of students do not think that radio frequency engineering is cool, okay? But we have a need in a telecommunications company for interns who want to go into that field. So, on your resume, if this applies to you, right? You would say, I've completed these courseworks and one of my projected I courses that I want to take is in antenna theory. The hiring manager that's looking at your resume and sees that you want to take a course in antenna theory is far more likely to want to talk to you as a candidate than they would if it wasn't listed. So just keep that in mind. Those are a couple of tips there. And then the last tip that we always give as an insider trick and trade to apply to T-Mobile is to include the color magenta on your resume. The color is not pink. It is magenta and it is trademarked. The color code is 226116. That is true magenta, it's not hot pink, it's not fuchsia, it is magenta. So those are the final things that I wanna give you guys as pieces of, of advice for applying specific to T-Mobile, as well as some tricks and trades just to apply to other industries um, in the US. Oh, that is awesome, Chelsea, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, do you wanna talk at all about T-Mobile and Sprint or COVID and work or just anything that is going on right now that you think is re relevant or, or maybe things that students wouldn't read in the news if they were reading about T-Mobile specifically? What's it yeah. like? What's going on in your world? Ha! Our world is wild right now, Bruce. Um, you know, uh, 
we'll first start with this, the merger with Sprint. Um, there's really no news there that you guys don't already know. We have merged with Sprint as of April 1st. We're in all of the process of combining all of our HR systems, et cetera. Nothing that you guys as candidates need to be even be worried or concerned about. You're gonna apply for jobs for T-Mobile, no different than you would have in years past. Um, nothing will look different. You might see a slight variation. Our, our logo has changed. There's now only two dots instead of three dots between the T and mobile. Again, nothing as you guys as candidates will see any differences in. We are the new T-Mobile. We're bigger, we're better, we're more badass, okay? So that's all you guys need to know about that. The, um, well, and I can I of say that we're really excited that this year, one of my six programs is actually Legacy Sprints uh, interns. They're called Sprinterns. Uh, they are one of the six programs that I am managing this summer. But for our 2021 season, we will be all one program. So they will be U of Magenta. Again. There's nothing changing for you guys as candidates because you will be U of Magenta interns. And then um, COVID, yeah, wild scenario we're in, guys. Um, for our program, you know, unfortunately, we had to make some ch some changes to our program this summer. We pr we always love having our interns in person. Obviously, that's not an option this summer. So all of our interns are starting virtual. Um, and then based off of federal and state guidelines, we'll be phasing interns back into the office um, as needed and as, as, as we can. Um, but all of our events are also going to be held virtually this year, which is sad for me because, again, I love my events and I love bringing people together. Like I said, if I was talking to a fifth grader, I plan parties, people. So um, that is you know, that's kind of COVID, but some takeaways I can give to you guys in light of COVID, uh, silver linings is that for me personally, I feel like there's a much better uh, work-life balance. I think companies are starting to recognize the need of really encouraging a true work-life balance for their employees. So, you know, you guys as uh, incoming either uh, interns or even professionals into, in the industry, because this is an amazing opportunity for you guys, because companies right now are realizing that, hey, I had a job in Bellevue, Washington that I needed filled, but because our company has been virtual for the last three months, there really is no business justification as to why that employee has to be in Bellevue, Washington. And I say this because as candidates all across the country, you guys now have the opportunity to be applying to jobs, not not just in your area. So not just in the greater Seattle area. You should be looking for jobs all across the nation because right now when hiring picks back up, companies will be hiring people all across the nation because their, their work platforms have supported someone being virtual for almost three months now. Um, so I, I, I know right now hiring can seem super discouraging. A lot of companies are froze right now. They're, they aren't hiring. Yes, we are one of them. Um, but you guys, once our economy comes back in full force, like we were before COVID, you guys will have endless opportunities and I'm super excited for you guys because, um, yeah, it, it's going to, it's going to be an exciting time for you guys as candidates. All right. And so the, uh, the 20, the summer 2020 internship program, just to, to kind of recap is, um, changed I, I i can't and and when do you start planning for the 21 the summer 21 internship program so obviously covid has affected things but so what is this year's this upcoming internship program look like in terms of changes and then what's your timeline for deciding what summer of 21 looks like yeah you know not many changes overall for our program we have all the same events we have the same number of interns, we didn't stop hiring our interns as a result of COVID. We actually cut off our internship uh, applications at the start of April. And then by April 30th, we had filled all of our internship opportunities for the summer. We have, again, over 300 interns, and that was right on track to what we were trying to achieve. So thankfully, because of COVID, there was no impacts there. So are, um, going, so are those interns going to be working remotely this, this summer? Yeah. So as, as I mentioned, as long as they have the right uh, IT infrastructure, they can connect with their 
supervisors, um, intern manager people, and, and, uh, and do the same meaningful work. They just won't be in an office. Yeah, so as a program, we've implemented a lot of virtual capabilities. We now have an intern application. We have additional intern platforms where we'll be connecting with interns and managers throughout the entire summer, which again is all new in light of COVID. And there are things that we will continue on for years to come because they are platforms that are truly just amazing in general. COVID opened up these doors and opportunities for us at a much sooner time frame. Mm -hmm. um, the interns will all start on June 17th. So uh, typically we have two cohorts of interns, one that starts in May, one that starts in June, and that's specific to whether or not you're a semester or a quarter-based school. Uh, for Central, quarter-based school, so all of your the interns here would be starting in June with us. Um, so those who were planning to start in May, we did have to delay uh, to June. Uh, their internship will be slightly shortened from 12 weeks to around 10 weeks. Um, and, you know, those are really the only changes that we had to make. Again, they will start virtual. The goal is to get everyone into the office by the end of their internship. But while you're virtual, we've provided all of our interns all the equipment they would possibly need. A laptop, monitors, headset, keyboard, mouse, backpack you name it, they got it. Um, and, you know, and then on top of that, you get a lot of fancy T-Mobile swag. So, um, so, yeah, are you not planning, many, not, or, so are you planning virtual parties? I now? am lots of virtual parties, but you know, this year they aren't quite so much parties as again, I mentioned that they are more development opportunities. We're bringing in a lot of partners to talk to our interns because it's really hard to bring people together on a on a web platform and engage and have fun because really only one person can be talking at a time. So when we have 300 interns on a single call, who talks first, who talks next kind of a thing. So we had to really shape our intern our, our events very differently this year. Um, and that's why we've shift, shifted them to, to be development opportunities as opposed to just gathering just to gather. Sure. And wow. then to answer your last question about when we start planning for our 2021 season, honestly, guys, the planning never stops. Um, we are already planning our 2021 season in a lot of roundabout ways. For instance, all of these new platforms that we've established last minute for this year um, in light of COVID, you know, we didn't plan that, but now we've planned that that's going to be used for our 2021 season. Um, and then beyond that, Throughout the process, as we identify different uh, chokeholds or pain points or whatever, we actually have as a team a parking list. Uh, uh, it's called a parking lot list of things that we want to address for our 2021 season. So again, we're not actively planning right now, but the true planning phase starts the second our interns start. Uh, so in a couple of weeks, we'll be full force planning for our 2021 season. It takes us about, you know, six or seven, six months or so to really get down the nitty gritties. As candidates, you can expect to see our available positions for our 2021 season um, open in fall. That kind of varies year to year. I would anticipate to have access to those at uh, October 1st in all honesty. Um, but yeah, that's when you would want to, as a candidate, start looking out for the internship opportunities. And then if you're looking for full-time roles, though, always just keep an eye. You can still apply for jobs in T-Mobile right now. They just aren't hiring. So when the hiring is, is a, when we're able to start hiring, if your job, if your position or your application is sitting there, it, it will get reviewed. So um, just keep that in mind. And that applies to any company right now. I don't know any company that isn't allowing applicants. It's just that they're not hiring right now. Okay. Uh, excellent information. When students want to reach out to you, you're saying connect with me via LinkedIn. And what is the method behind your madness of saying only LinkedIn? How are you actually trying to help students there? Yeah, well, to be totally honest, guys, if you emailed me, you'd be lost in a thousand emails a day. 
LinkedIn though, I get personally notified on my personal cell phone that you've reached out to me. So you have a far greater chance of hearing from me via LinkedIn than you do our thousands of emails that sit in our internship program mailbox at any given day. Um, but beyond that, you guys, the reason why I really recommend you connecting with me on LinkedIn is because I've said it a thousand times in my conversation with you today is that networking is huge. And as college students, this is your time to start building your network. So getting connected with me on LinkedIn only further opens up your network for other people in T-Mobile if that is truly where you want to work. So um, I just always recommend people connect with me there because obviously that starts building your network. It builds my network as well. It's a, it's a win-win for both parties. Um, and then from there, I can get you in contact with different people within the company um, if the need arises. Oh, excellent. Boy, so much good information. And I truly appreciate it, Chelsea.